Okay, continuing along with polar coordinates. Now, what I would like to do is, is to look at projectile motion in polar coordinates. And here's where you would say, but wait, 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 that's crazy. Why would you do crazy stuff like that? Why would you do projectile motion in polar coordinates? Cartesian coordinates makes more sense. And yes, that's true. But it's not as much fun. Okay, so I mean, this is just a fun situation, right? We can apply, we can do it in a weird way, but it's projectile motion, so we know what we're supposed to get and we can kind of check things out. So that's where we're at. Okay, so a quick review. Um, so here I have some object, and this is in Cartesian coordinates, uh, launched with some initial velocity v0 at some angle theta, and then there's only the gravitational force acting on it. Got that. So in polar coordinates, um, I have Newton's second law, f net equals ma, but the, the, in polar coordinates, I'm going to have the position described by the coordinates r and theta. And here's the important part. The unit vectors in, the car, in polar coordinates are r hat this way and theta hat that way. And they, do not, they are not constant with respect to time. So when you take the derivative of r with respect to time and then take the derivative of that with respect to time, then you get weird stuff because you have to take the derivative of the, the, of the unit vectors too, which you don't, well you do in Cartesian coordinates, but in the Cartesian coordinate system, x hat and y hat are constant. So when you take the derivatives with respect to time, they go away and it makes things easier. So I already did a video on the acceleration in polar coordinates and we get this. The r component of the acceleration is r double dot, which tells you how fast this changed the acceleration of the radius double dot means the derivative with respect to time twice. Uh, r theta dot squared minus r theta dot squared. And then the acceleration in the theta direction is r theta double dot plus two r dot theta dot. So that that's given. Okay. Um, I, I guess I should also say that uh, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. That's where we're gonna use that too. Okay, so let's look at our object. Let's say this is my ball, and then I have the gravitational force in that direction. I'm just gonna draw it as a scalar, and I need to find the component of the gravitational force in the r and theta direction. And yet, yeah, that does seem silly, okay? But that's what's gonna make it so much fun, trust me. So if that angle is theta, just imagine, these are kind of hard, you can do some geometry here, and you could say, oh, that's a complement of theta, right, because this is a right triangle, and then that also would be theta, that's good. But you can also check, as this goes down all the way down here, then uh, mg would be in the opposite, in the theta hat direction, so theta would be zero. Oops. So now I can write uh, my f net in the r direction, is going to be m a r, which a is r double dot minus r theta dot squared. And that's going to be equal to the uh, r component of this, which is right here. So if that's m g and that's theta, this is going to be minus m g sine theta. And the masses cancel. So I get r double dot minus r theta dot squared equals negative g sine theta. Now if we do this in the y, in the theta direction, f net theta equals m, and then r theta, I mean the acceleration in the theta direction is this, r theta double dot plus two r dot theta dot, and the theta hat component is going to be negative mg cosine theta because we're looking at this part of that, that force. So negative mg cosine theta, again the masses cancel, and I get r theta dot double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot equals negative g cosine theta. Okay, so I have a cra two crazy equations here, but these are my essentially my differential form of the equation of motion in polar coordinates. Uh, so in order to solve this, we could probably do some crazy differential equation stuff, but I'm going to use a numerical solution uh, just because that way if you're not great with differential equations, you can still do this. I don't even know how to solve that anyway. Okay, so let me rewrite these two equations. Okay, so here we have um, 
Well, let me just take this one. I'll, I'll do it right here. I want to take this one and solve for r double dot. So if I solve this for r double dot, I can add this to both sides and I get r double dot equals r theta dot squared minus g sine theta. Cool. Now I can do the same thing right here. I can solve this for theta double dot. So I'm going to subtract that from both sides and divide by r and I get theta double dot equals negative g cosine theta minus 2 r dot theta dot all of that over r. Cool, cool. Okay, what do we do now? How do we, how do we model the motion in polar coordinates? So um, here we're going to use the basic idea. Let me write this r double dot. Let's say r double dot is equal to, in, in a short time interval, and in, in fact is the limit as delta t goes to zero, this would be delta r dot over delta t. It's the derivative, and as delta t goes to zero, this becomes the derivative, and that's true. So I can write this as r2 dot minus r1 dot over delta t. And then I can use this to solve for r2 dot, which is the velocity. So r2 dot is going to be equal to r1 dot plus r double dot delta t. Now, this is just an approximation because if my time, you have to consider that r dot's changing during that, r double dot's changing, because that's not a constant value, so this doesn't really work. Uh, but kind of works. Kind of. And yeah, this is the Euler method. Euler method. Uh, for numerical calculations. It's not the best, but it's one I think that everyone can easily understand, and that's what I'm going to use. And if it works, it works, and that's all there is to it. So now once I find, uh, I, if I start right here, I can calculate based on the initial conditions r double dot. From that, in the short time interval, I can update r dot. And then I can do the same thing. r dot is delta r over delta t. So r2 equals r1 plus r dot delta t. So here's my step. One, calculate r double dot. Two, calculate r2 dot. That's updating the, the velocity, the radial velocity. Three, update the radial position. And then I need to do the same thing for theta. So again, theta double dot, same, same idea applies is delta theta dot over delta t. So I can calculate theta double dot, and then I can calculate theta two dot equals theta one dot plus theta double dot delta t. And this is gonna be also two, and this is one. There's, I have to do both those together. And then I can do the next thing too, calculate theta two equals theta one plus theta dot delta t. Now the question is right here, which r dot do you use? I just calculated r2. Uh, technically it should be the average, but who cares? If delta t is small, I'm actually just going to calculate r2 dot and just use that right here and same thing right there. Okay, And then I need to update time. And then that's if I use a short time interval, I just jump back to the beginning and I do it again, I do it again and again. Now let's look right here. Um, it, for my initial conditions, let's say V0 equals 10 meters per second and theta equals uh, 77 degrees. I'm just picking something. Okay. Now I need to get uh, R dot initial and theta dot initial. Now, so let's just do that real quick. So here's my velocity. So if I launch it at that angle, then R, this is R dot initial because it's going in that direction. It's not turning. Okay. Theta dot initial is zero. Uh, okay, what about R initial and theta initial? Well, theta initial is obviously 77 degrees and change that to radians. R initial is not zero. I can't. I mean, I could, but I can't. Right? So let's just say this is like 0 0.1 meters or something like that. Because if I put in r is 0 right here, 
then I'm going to have to divide by zero and I'm going to get uh, an explosion for theta double dot and then everything, nothing will work. So I'm just going to pick a small value and see if I can get it to work. Uh, and then we can plot, we can calculate, uh, we can give a plot of r versus time and see what that looks like. We can get, uh, oops, theta versus time and see what that looks like. And then more importantly, once I calculate r and theta, I can use uh, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and plot these and see if I get a trajectory, which is you know just a double check. And then you may say, well, look, you just undid everything you did. Why are you wasting your time? And it's because I want to have fun. Okay, it's just like uh, Peter Parker said in Captain America: Civil War when he was recording and making a video diary and, and ha why am I telling you this story? And then Happy goes, hey, you know you can't share that with anyone. He goes, I know. And then he says, why are you doing this? Well, it's for fun. This is for fun. Okay, so I have this down. We're gonna switch over to the computer over there and we're gonna finish in Python and I'll share you the code. I'll make sure if I forget to include the links to how to derive the, uh, the acceleration in polar coordinates. I'll see you over there. So, uh, let's start, we're gonna, we're gonna need a graph. Um, and I'm not sure, the X title, let's put, let's plot R versus, let's just, let's, mm, let's do this, uh, time in seconds. And I'm gonna leave the, the, other, the other one off. So I'm gonna say FR equals G curve, color equals color dot blue, and label equals r. And then ft for theta is g curve color color dot red and label equals theta. Ah. Ah. Theta. Okay. Now I need to start with initial conditions. Well, I need g. G is 9.8. Uh, v0, I said that was going to be 10. Uh, theta is going to be 77. I just picked that times uh, pi divided by 180. I think in, in degrees. I'm not sure why. Okay, now I need the other initial condition. So I need r dot. So r dot, uh, let's call this dr. For the d stands for the dot. So dr is going to be v0. I need uh, r that's going to be 0 0.1. I need r, dr, I need theta and d theta. Right. So d, uh, theta, I already have that. So d theta is equal to 0. Okay. Now, while, let's do this. And so if, if I launch at 77 degrees and it gets back down to the ground, then theta is going to be 0. Right. So let's say while, you know, if I was doing this in Cartesian coordinates, let's say while y is greater than zero. But let's say while theta is greater than or equal to zero. Now the first thing we're gonna do, I got my paper right here, let's see what this is. I'm gonna calculate r double dot. So d d r, that's double dot r, that's my notation. I'm just typing in my equation right here. It's r times uh, theta dot square, squared minus g times sine theta. Now I'm going to calculate theta double dot, d, d theta, and I'm looking at my equation here, it's negative g times cosine theta minus 2 times minus 2 times r dot times theta dot divided by r. Now I'm going to, I'm looking at step number two, calculate r dot. So dr equals dr plus d dr times dt. Aha, need time. So say t equals zero, dt equals, dt equals 0 0.001. And if we need to change that, we can do that later. Now I'm gonna go down here and calculate the uh, d theta. So theta dot, theta dot, theta, theta dot equals theta dot plus d double dot theta times dt. Now I need to update r. r equals r plus d plus dr times delta t and theta 
equals theta plus d theta times dt. Okay, so just a quick reminder, I say this all the time, but like this equation right here, this, this dr does not cancel with this dr because this is a make equal to sign in Python. This says make this equal to. So this is dr1 and dr2 and 3 and 4 and so forth. It's all of them. That's what makes this so awesome. Okay, now I need to also update time. t equals t plus dt. And I'm going to plot. Let's just see if it works. I'm going to plot r versus time and theta versus time on the same curve. And so it might not look good. We'll just find out. So let's say rfr dot plot, the x coordinate is going to be time, the y coordinate is going to be r. F, let's scroll up. Ft dot plot, t theta. If this works, I mean, I don't even know what I'm going to say. Uh, polar coordinate projectile. How's that look? What do you guys think? 92% chance it works. I'm going to go with the 92% chance. See, didn't work. X, aha, X tile is not a graph. See, you guys are supposed to catch it. X title, tie, toll. Okay, save it. Run it. What the heck? It worked. Oh, what did it work? Okay. Well, let's just think. So this is R. So R is getting uh, greater and greater and greater, then decreases, then, then increases again. Now, that's kind of hard to kind of encapsulate in your mind. We don't think in polar coordinates. The angle uh, starts off. See, this is kind of hard because this, this angle, it, it's harder to see, right? I mean, uh, 2 pi would be up here. A uh, pi would be um, over there or something like that. So that looks okay. Uh, so let's go up here and just use, uh, let's not plot Let's just, let's just use the R. Let's just test this. Okay. So I'm going to say, um, let's calculate X. X equals R times cosine theta. Y equals R times sine theta. And then I'm, I'm going to use the FR. Oh, wait. I need to do that up here. So let's just move this. So now I'm just going to plot X versus R. So it'd be a trajectory, x versus y. Let's just see what happens. And the label will be wrong. And if it's a parabola, the trajectory should be a parabola, then I win. And I win. Okay. So, and then you can even check the range here, and you could do all that other sort of calculations. But that is where I'm going to stop. Because I don't want to do anything else, so I'll make a mistake, and I want to win. So there you go. Projectile motion in polar coordinates. I'll give you this link. I, I'm going to fix this real quick. I'll fix this back to the way it was without with the FR and the, the plotting R and theta, and then I'll, I'll include the link below. And I said I had a new tag out. Other, that's what. Cool. So cool, cool. That's it.